Hey everyone. So in today's lesson, we are going to be reading chapter six out of our Foundations My Lady book. Chapter six is chemistry and chemical safety. And we are on page 153. Explain chemistry and chemical safety. So as beauty professionals, you will work with chemistry every day. Chemistry, along with chemicals and chemical changes, makes life on earth possible. The daily functioning of our bodies is based on chemical reactions and our very hair, skin, and nails are made of chemicals. Creams, lotions, masks, and makeup, whether they come from natural sources like plant extracts or from ingredients manufactured in a lab, are made from chemicals. The effects of cosmetic and beauty products are based on how the body reacts to chemicals. Beauty professionals must have a basic knowledge of chemistry and understand how different chemicals affect the hair, nails, or the skin, and be able to choose the correct product for each client's particular needs. Beauty professionals should study and have a thorough understanding of chemistry because without an understanding of basic chemistry, they will not be able to use professional products effectively and safely. Every product used in beauty and wellness services contains some type of chemical. Beauty professionals should be able to troubleshoot and solve potential common problems with chemical services. It is important to know and follow the procedures for handling chemical used in the salon, spa, and barbershop by reading labels and following manufacturer's instructions to keep their clients and themselves safe. Identify the basics of chemistry structure. Chemistry is a science that leads with the composition, structure, and properties of matter and how matter changes under different conditions. So then what is matter? Matter is any substance that occupies space and has mass, meaning weight. All matter has physical and chemical properties and exists in the form of solid, liquid, or gas. Please highlight that and put a star next to it. Since matter is made from chemicals, everything made out of matter is a chemical. Matter has a physical property that we can touch, taste, smell, or see. In fact, everything you can touch and everything you can see, with the exception of light and electricity, is matter. All matter is made up of chemicals. You can see visible light and light created by electrical sparks. However, these are not made of matter. Light and electricity are forms of energy. Energy is not matter. Everything known to exist in the universe is made up of either matter or energy. There are no exceptions to this rule. Energy does not occupy space or have mass. Energy is discussed further in Chapter 7, Electricity and Electrical Safety. Elements. An element is a simple form of chemical matter and contains only one type of atom. It cannot be broken down into a simpler substance without a loss of identity. There are 118 elements known to science today. 98 occur naturally on Earth. The remaining elements, known as synthetic elements, are produced artificially or through synthesis. All matter is known universe is made up of elements that have their own distinct physical and chemical properties. Each element is identified by a letter symbol, such as O for oxygen, C for carbon, or H for hydrogen. Symbols for all the elements can be found on the periodic table of elements in chemistry textbooks or by searching the internet. We're on page 155. Atoms are the basic unit of matter with a nucleus at the center surrounded by negatively charged electrons that move around the nucleus in orbits. The nucleus consists of protons and neutrons, and it is the number of protons that determine the element. 
Atoms cannot be divided into simpler substances by ordinary chemical means. Shows the atomic structure of carbon with six protons and six neutrons at the nucleus and six electrons in the orbit. Molecules. Just as words are made by combining letters, molecules are made by combining atoms. A molecule is a chemical combination of two or more atoms in definite proportions, meaning fixed proportions. For example, water is made from hydrogen atoms and oxygen atoms. Carbon dioxide is made from carbon atoms and oxygen atoms. Atmospheric oxygen and other chemical substances, such as nitrogen and water vapor, make up the air you breathe. Atmospheric oxygen is considered an elemental molecule, a molecule containing two or more atoms of the same element in definite proportions. It is written as O2. Ozone is another elemental molecule made up of oxygen. Ozone is a major component of smog and can be very dangerous. It contains three atoms of the element oxygen and is written as O3. Compound molecules, also known as compounds, are chemical combinations of two or more atoms of different elements in definite, meaning fixed, proportions. Sodium chloride, common table salt, is an example of a compound molecule. Each sodium chloride molecule contains one atom of the element sodium and one atom of the element chlorine. Physical and chemical properties of matter. Matter can be changed in two different ways. Physical force cause physical changes and chemical reactions cause chemical changes. A physical change is a change in the form of physical properties or a substance. Without a chemical reaction or the creation of a new substance, no chemical reactions are involved in physical change and no new chemicals are formed. Solid ice undergoes a physical change when it melts into water and then converts into steam when heat is applied. A physical change occurs when nail polish is applied onto nails and the solvent evaporates, forming a layer of film on the nail. A chemical change is a change in the chemical composition or makeup of a substance. This change is caused by chemical reactions that create new chemical substances, usually by combining or subtracting certain elements. Those new substances have different chemical and physical properties. In fact, every substance has unique properties that allow us to identify it. As with two type of changes, the two type of properties are physical and chemical as well. Physical properties are characteristics that can be determined without a chemical reaction and do not involve a chemical change in the substance. Physical properties include color, solubility, odor, density, melting point, boiling point, hardness, and glossiness. Chemical properties are characteristics that can be determined by only a chemical reaction and involve a chemical change in the substance. Examples include the ability of iron to rust, wood to burn, or hair to change color through the use of hair color and hydrogen peroxide. Pure substances and physical mixtures. All matter can be classified as either a pure substance or a physical mixture. A pure substance is a chemical combination of matter in definite proportions. Pure substances have unique properties. 
Water and salt are examples of pure substances with atoms in set proportions. Two hydrogen atoms per oxygen atom and one sodium atom per chlorine atom, respectively, most substances do not exist in a pure state. Air contains many substances, including nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and water vapor. This is an example of a physical mixture. A physical mixture is a physical combination of matter in any proportion. The properties of a physical mixture are the combined properties of the substance in the mixture. Salt water is a physical mixture of salt and water in any proportion. The properties of salt water are the properties contained in salt and in water. Salt water is salty and wet. Most of the products that beauty professionals use are physical mixtures. We're on page 159. Explain the difference between solutions, suspensions, and emulsions. To better serve their clients, beauty professionals should have an understanding of the chemical compositions, preparations, and use of cosmetics that are intended for the hair, skin, and nails, and body in general. Most of the products a beauty professional uses are solutions, suspensions, and emulsions. Solutions, suspensions, and emulsions are all physical mixtures. The distinction between them depends on the type of substances, the size of the particles, and the solubility of the substances. A solution is a stable uniform mixture of two or more substances. The solute is the substance that is dissolved in a solution. The solvent is the substance that dissolves the solute and makes the solution. For example, when salt is dissolved in water, salt is the solute and water is the solvent. Water is known as the universal solvent because it has the ability to dissolve more substances than any other solvent. All liquids are either miscible or immiscible. Miscible liquids are mutually soluble, meaning they can be mixed together to form solutions. Water and alcohol are examples of miscible liquids. As in a nail polish remover, when these substances are mixed together, they will stay mixed forming a solution. Solutions contain small particles that are invisible to the naked eye. Solution, solutions are usually transparent, although they may be colored, they do not separate when left still. Again, salt water is an example of a solution with a solid dissolved in a liquid. Water is the solvent that dissolves the salt and holds it in a solution. Immiscible liquids are not capable of being mixed together to form a stable solution. Water and oil are two examples. They can be mixed together, but will separate when they're left sitting still. When immiscible liquids are combined, they form suspensions. Suspensions are unstable physical mixtures of undissolved particles in a liquid. Compared with solutions, suspensions contain larger and fewer miscible particles. The particles are generally visible to the naked eye, but are not large enough to settle quickly to the bottom. Suspensions are not usually transparent and may be colored. They are unstable and separate over time, which is why some lotions and cream can separate in the bottle and need to be shaken before they are used. An example of a suspension is the glitter in nail polish, 
which can separate from the polish. Calamine lotion is another example. An emulsion is an unstable physical mixture of two or more immiscible substances, substances that normally will not stay mixed, plus a special ingredient called an emulsifier. An emulsifier is an ingredient that brings two normally incompatible materials together and binds them into a uniform and fairly stable mixture. Emulsions are considered to be a special type of suspension because they can separate. However, the separation usually happens very slowly over a long period of time. An example of an emulsion is skin cream. A properly formulated emulsion stored under ideal conditions can be stable for up to three years since conditions are rarely ideal, all cosmetic emotions should be used within one year of purchase. Always refer to the product's instructions and cautions for specific details. So let's summarize the differences between solutions, suspensions, and emotions. So solutions are miscible, no surfactant, small particles, stable mixture, usually clear, witch hazel. Suspensions, slightly miscible, no surfactant, larger particles, unstable, temporary mixture, usually cloudy, nail polish, glitter, and polish would be an example. Emotions would be immiscible, surfactant, largest part particles, Limited stability through an emulsifier, usually a solid color. An example will be shampoos, conditioners, and your hand lotions. Bottom of page 161. If you are following along with the exact same book that I am using, I hope that you are highlighting and putting stars next to everything that you are seeing in my book. Surfactants. Surfactants are substances that allow oil and water to mix or emulsify. As such, they are one type of emulsifiers. A surfactant molecule has two distinct parts. The head of the surfactant molecule is hydrophilic, capable of combining with or attracting water, meaning it's water-loving. The tail is lipophilic, having an affinity for or an attraction to fat and oils, oil loving. Following the like dissolves like rule, a chemistry rule of thumb describing how solvents dissolve chemically similar solutes. For example, water dissolves salt, but not all, but not oil. The hydrophilic head dissolves in water and the lipophilic tail dissolves in oil. Thus, a surfactant molecule mixes with and dissolves in both oil and water and temporarily joins them together to form an emulsion. Oil and water emulsions. In an oil and water emulsion, oil droplets are emulsified in water. The droplets of oils are surrounded by surfactant molecules with their lipophilic tails pointing in, in and their hydrophilic head pointing out. Tiny oil droplets form the internal portion of each oil and water emulsion because the oil is completely surrounded by water. Oil and water emulsions do not feel as greasy as water and oil emulsions do because the oil is hidden and the water forms the external portion of the emulsion. Salons, spas, and barbershops use primarily oil and water emulsions. Now let's talk about water and oil emulsions. Water droplets are emulsified in oil. The droplets of water are surrounded by surfactants with their hydrophilic heads pointing in and their lipophilic tails pointing out. 
tiny droplets of water form the internal portion of a water and oil emulsion because the water is completely surrounded by oil. Water and oil emulsions feel greasier than oil and water emulsions do because the water is hidden and oils again form the external portion of the emulsion. Styling creams, cold creams, suntan lotions, and foot balms are examples of water and oil emulsions. Other physical mixtures, ointments, paste, pomades, and styling waxes are semi-solid mixtures made with any combination of patrolatum, petroleum jelly, oil, and wax. Powders are a physical mixture of one or more type of solids. Off the scalp, powder hair lighteners are physical mixtures. These mixtures may separate during shipping and storage and should be thoroughly mixed by shaking the container before each use. Did you know mayonnaise is an example of an oil in water emulsion of two immiscible liquids. Although oil and water are immiscible, the egg yolk in mayonnaise emulsifies the oil droplets and distributes them uniformly in the water. Without the egg yolk as an emulsifying agent, the oil and water would separate. Most of the emulsions used in a salon, spa, or barber shop are oil and water. Hair color, shampoos, conditioners, hand lotions, and facial creams, again, are oil and water emulsions. We are now on page 164. All right, so common chemical product ingredients. Beauty professionals use many chemical products when performing client services. The following are some of the most common chemical ingredients used in beauty and wellness products. Our first one is volatile alcohols which evaporates easily okay these chemicals are familiar to most people however there are many other types of alcohols from free flowing liquids to hard waxy solids fatty alcohols such as citral alcohol and citral alcohol are non-volatile alcohol waxes that are used as skin conditioners so they're not as drying. Our next one is alkalonamines are alkaline substances used to neutralize acids or raise the pH of many hair products. They are often used in place of ammonia because they produce less order. And then we have, of course, ammonia is a colorless gas composed of hydrogen and nitrogen that has a pungent Older. It is used to raise the pH in hair products to allow the solution to penetrate the hair shaft. Ammonium hydroxide and ammonium thioglycolate are examples of ammonia compounds that are used to perform chemical services. Then we have glycerin. It's a sweet, colorless, oily substance. It is used as a solvent and as a moisturizer in skin and body creams. We can't forget about silicones are a special type of oil used in hair conditioners, water resistant lubricants for the skin and nail polish dryers. Silicones are less greasy than other oils and form a breathable film that does not cause comedones, meaning blackheads. Silicones also give a silky smooth feeling to the skin and great shine to the hair. Certain silicone resins, okay, can withstand high pH environments and can be incorporated into hair relaxers and permanent wave formulations. Then we have volatile organic compounds. Contain carbon, organic, and evaporates very easily. So for example, a common VOC used in hairspray is SD alcohol, okay? Volatile organic solvents such as ethyl acetate and isopropyl alcohol are used in nail polish, base and top coats, and polish removers. 
bottom of page 164, the overexposure principle. You may often hear the word toxic. People tend to think of a toxic substance as a dangerous poison. However, the toxicity of a substance is related to how it is used and how much of it is used. The truth is everything on earth is toxic to some degree. There's nothing in the world that is completely non-toxic. The very word non-toxic is made up of marketing terms that has no precise scientific meaning. Overexposure refers to how prolonged, repeated, or long-term exposure to certain product ingredients can cause sensitivity in some people. The overexposure principle is used to describe how overexposure determines toxicity. It holds that it is the dose of a substance that determines whether it will have a negative poisonous effect on the body, for example. Salt water is very toxic to drink, yet you can safely swim in the ocean without fear of poisoning. Similar, rubbing alcohol is quite toxic. A tablespoonful can poison and kill a small child. However, it is safe to use on the body and when kept out of reach of children. Toxicity does not mean a substance is automatically unsafe. Instead, it tells you that you must be sure to use it in a safe manner. To understand how to safely use and handle your products, review the Manufacturer Safety Data Sheet, SDS, for important safety information. Describe potential hydrogen and how the pH scale works. Although pH, an abbreviation of potential hydrogen, is often mentioned when talking about beauty products, it is one of the least understood chemical properties. Notice that pH is written with a small p, which re represents a quantity, and the capital H, which represents the hydrogen ion. The term pH represents the quantity of hydrogen ions. Understanding pH and how it affects the hair, skin, and nails is essentially to understanding all beauty and wellness services. Water and pH. Before you can understand pH, you need to learn about ions. An ion is an atom or molecule that carries an electrical charge. Ionization is the separation of an atom or molecule into positive and negative ions. An ion with a negative electrical charge is an anion. An ion with a positive electrical charge is a cation. Some water, H2O, molecules naturally ionize into hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. The pH scale measures these ions. The hydrogen ions, H plus, is acidic. The more hydrogen ions there are in a substance, the more acidic it will be. The hydroxide ion, OH negative, is alkaline. The more hydroxide ions there are in a substance, the more alkaline it will be. pH is only possible because of the ionization of water. Therefore, only products that contain water can actually have a pH. In pure distilled water, each water molecule that ionizes produces one hydrogen ion and one hydroxide ion. Pure water has a neutral pH because it contains the same number of hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. It is an equal balance of 50% acidic and 50% alkaline. The pH of any substance is always a balance of both acidity and alkalinity. 
As acidity increases, alkalinity decreases. The opposite it is also true. As alkalinity increases, acidity decreases. Even the strongest acid also contains some alkalinity. The pH scale. The pH scale is used to measure the acidity and alkalinity of substances. It has a range of 0 to 14. A pH of 7 is a neutral solution. A pH below 7 indicates an acidic solution. And a pH above 7 indicates an alkaline solution. However, one point of pH difference is more than it looks because the pH scale is a logarithmic scale. A change of one whole number represents a tenfold change in pH. This means, for example, that a pH of 8 is 10 times more alkaline than a pH of 7. A change of two whole numbers represents a change of 10 times 10, or a hundredfold change. So a pH of 9 is 100 times more alkaline than a pH of 7. Even a small change on the pH scale represents a large change in the pH. Okay, and as you guys can see, here on figure 613, there is an example of a, obviously, the pH scale. On page 167, pH is always a balance of both, again, acidity and alkalinity. Pure distilled water has a pH of 7, which is an equal balance of acid and alkaline. Although a pH of 7 is neutral on the pH scale, it is not neutral compared to the hair and skin, which have an average of pH of 5. Pure water with a pH of 7 is 100 times more alkaline than a pH of 5. So pure water is 100 times more alkaline than your hair and skin. The difference in pH is the reason pure water can cause the hair to swell as much as 20%. pH and skincare products. When the skin is exposed to extremes in pH levels, dryness, dehydration, inflammation, and even bacteria can grow if the product is incorrect for that skin type. It is important to use products that contain the proper pH for a given skin type. So for example, if a client has dry, dehydrated skin, giving that client a product that is too acidic could make things worse, right? Further their dryness and irritate their skin. Conversely, if a client has oily skin type, a product that is slightly alkaline may contribute to oil and sebum buildup and possibly create acne. This client may need a product with a more acidic pH. Acids and alkaline. All acids owe their chemical reactivity to the hydrogen ion. Acids have a pH below 7. Alpha hydroxy acids, also known as AHAs, derived from plants, mostly fruits, are examples of acids often used to exfoliate the skin and to help adjust the pH of a lotion, conditioner, or cream. Acids contract and close the hair cuticle. One such acid is thioglycolic acid, a colorless liquid or white crystals with a strong, unpleasant odor that is used in permanent waving solution. Glycolic acid is an alpha hydroxy acid, again an AHA, used in exfoliation and to lower the pH of products. All alkalis, also known as bases, owe their chemical reactivity to the hydrogen ion. 
Alkalis are compounds that react with acids to form salts. Alkalides have a pH above 7. They feel slippery, soapy on the skin. Alkalides soften and swell hair, skin, and the cuticles on the nail plate and calloused skin. Sodium hydroxide, commonly known as lye, is a very strong alkali used in chemical hair relaxers. Callus softeners and drain cleaners. These products must be used according to the manufacturer's instructions. It is very important that you do not let these products touch or sit on the skin as they can cause injury or a burning sensation. Sodium hydroxide products may be especially dangerous if they get into the eyes. So always wear safety glasses to avoid eye contact. Consult the product's SDS for more specific information on safe use. Summarize neutralization and redox reactions. Two types of chemical reactions are of particular importance to beauty professionals because they explain how major beauty products work. They are acid alkali neutralization reactions and oxidation reduction reactions. Neutralization reaction. So acid alkali neutralization reactions occur when an acid is mixed with an alkali in equal proportions, balancing the total pH and forming water, H2O, and a salt. Neutralizing shampoos and normalizing lotions used to neutralize hair relaxers work by causing an acid alkali neutralization reaction. This stops the relaxing process and returns the hair to its natural pH level. Similarly, slightly acidic liquid soaps can be used to neutralize alkaline callus softener residues left on the skin after rinsing with water. In both of these examples, the natural pH of the hair or skin is covered, an important step in beauty services that returns the body to equilibrium. We're on page 169. Let's talk about redox reactions. Oxidation reduction. Oxidation reduction, also known as redox, is a chemical reaction in which oxidation and reductions can take place at the same time. When oxygen is chemically combined with a substance, the substance is oxidized. When oxygen is chemically removed from a substance, the substance is reduced. An oxidizing agent is a substance that releases oxygen, hydrogen peroxide, which can be thought of as water with an extra atom of oxygen is an example of an oxidating agent. A reducing agent is a substance that adds hydrogen to a chemical compound or subtracts oxygen from the compound. When hydrogen peroxide is mixed with an oxidating hair color, oxygen is subtracted from the hydrogen peroxide and the hydrogen peroxide is reduced. At the same time, oxygen is added to the hair color and the hair color is oxidized. In this example, hair color is the reducing agent. So far, we have considered oxidation only as the addition of oxygen and reduction only as the loss of oxygen. Although the first known oxidation reaction involved oxygen, many oxidation reactions do not involve oxygen. All right, so we are going to move on to the bottom of page 169, where it's talking about exothermic reactions so when certain chemical reactions release energy in the form of heat, it is called exothermic reaction. An example of this is the heat produced after mixing the activator and the waving solution in an exothermic permanent waving product. 
when the activation, which contains hydrogen peroxide, is added to the waving solution, an oxidation reaction happens that produces heat. The mixing of these chemicals produces a more rapid form of oxidation than the slower oxidation that happens with permanent waving neutralizers or oxidation hair color products. In most cases, you can expect to feel a slight warming of the container after mixing the activator with the waving lotion. Next page, page 170. So examples of an exothermic reaction is a nail product that hardens, okay, to create nail enhancement. In fact, all oxidation reactions are exothermic reaction. Next one, combustion is the rapid oxidation of a substance that is followed by the production of heat and light. Lightning a match is an example of a combustion. Oxidation requires the presence of oxygen. This is the reason that there cannot be a fire without air. All right, endothermic reaction. So an endothermic reaction is a chemical reaction that requires the absorption of energy or heat from the external source for the reaction to actually happen, right? So melting ice is the example of an endothermic reaction. If the ice were not absorbing heat from its surroundings, it would not be melting, right? Okay, so practice chemical safety. Considering all of the types of chemicals used in daily, uh, used daily in the salon, spas, and barbershop, along with all of their potential actions and reactions, practicing chemical safety should be of primary concern for everyone. So let's talk about labels. Manufacturers of chemicals that are registered with either the EPA or FDA are held at very strict standards for their labels. These require that all hazards be disclosed along with specific cautions and directions for their use. Okay, transportation. So the first time you enter a beauty supply store as a licensed professional can be very exciting. Okay, here's an entire store filled with tools of your trade, and now you are actually allowed to purchase them. It is important that you uh, obviously shop, but you pay attention to the product labels. Some may list warnings that will affect how you transport them. So for example, if a label says to do not store at a temperature above 78 degrees Fahrenheit or avoid direct sunlight, you know that it, it would not be safe um, to transport this product in your trunk, for example, or to let it sit in your car on a hot summer day. Another consideration when transporting chemicals is products that are incompatible, meaning that they should not be mixed or even be stored near each other. So for example, hydrogen peroxide is a common chemical in hair developer. However, when it is mixed with bleach, it creates chlorine gas, which can be deadly. With this in mind, driving with developer and bleach rolling around in the back seat might not be the best idea. All right. Moving on to the next page, which is talking about proper storage. We're on page 172 at the top. So the storage of chemicals in the salon, right, is very, it's an area where it needs to be safe and strict, right? Where things are processed, everything should be followed to prevent injury and obviously fires from happening. Having a designated place to store specific chemicals and never really allowing the chemicals to just sit out in the open and obviously keeping it from out of reach of children. So all of that is very important and it's going over it again on page 172. Mixing. So mixing chemicals can create dangerous gases such as chlorine, nitrogen, trichloride, chloramine vapors, and hydrazine. Because of these gases can be life-threatening, processes concerning the mixing of chemicals should be clear to everyone who works in the salon or spa and should never be compromised. Consider these guidelines when mixing or preparing 
or preparing to mix chemicals. So what you want to do is you obviously want the location where you are mixing to be very well ventilated and have protective equipment available, including an eye wash bottle, just in case. You obviously want to make sure that you always read the chemical labels thoroughly before mixing using a measuring device, okay, such as a measuring cup or spoon or whatever is needed. Always add the chemical to the water, not the other way around when using concentrated chemicals like disinfectants. And if you remember clearly, we discussed this in our infection control chapter. When concentrates are mixed and used in a secondary container, make sure that the spray bottle or whatever container you are using, that it is properly labeled. Remember, everything must be labeled. All right, then it goes on talking about disposal. So many of the chemicals that go down the sink drain every day in the salon, okay, are dangerous to the environment and create burdens on our uh, wastewater systems. Unfortunately, although many products have instructions for disposal of the container, few address disposal of the chemicals itself, right? In many parts of the country, however, programs that recycle the chemical waste from beauty services do exist and hopefully they will continue to grow over the years. All right, bottom of page 173, interpret safety data sheets. So the OSHA hazards communication standard requires that employees be notified of any chemical in their workplace that could be hazardous. Prior to 2015, the material safety data sheet that was a document used to provide this information to workers and first responders. In 2015, these were replaced, okay, by the safety data sheet, also known as SDS. Again, if you are following along with this book, I hope that you are highlighting and putting stars next to everything that you see in the book. While they contain essentially the same information, there are some significant differences between the two. While both sheets provide valuable safety information about chemicals, the organization and ease of understanding the, uh, has been greatly improved in the SDS. So all SDS are formatted into 16 categories with nine accepted pictograms and are provided for free from the manufacturer of the chemical. Having an SDS available for every chemical used in the salon is re a requirement of OSHA. Additionally, it is required that SDS be immediately available to all employees. So storing them in a computer that only managers can access or keeping them in a locked office is not acceptable. Remember, these sheets are for use in emergencies, which are often chaotic situations where every second counts. So, SDS categories are the following, okay? Identification, including the name of product, contact information for the manufacturer or distributor. Hazards, identification, list of all hazards associated with the product and include hazards classifications, okay? Composition, information on the ingredients, first aid measures, firefighting measures, okay? Accidental release measures, Handling and storage, okay, including guidelines for safe handling and storage of chemicals, all right? Exposure control, personal protection, physical and chemical properties, stability and reactivity, toxicological information, ecological information, disposal consideration, transport information. All of these um, categories, okay, are in your SDS sheet regulatory information, and of course, other information. SDS vocabulary, we're on page 176. Safety data sheet make use of a wide range of scientific, medical, and specialized vocabulary to describe chemical properties and hazards while it is well beyond the scope of this book to tactical SDS vocabulary as a whole. It is important to make a dis distinction between two pairs of related terms. So please highlight and put a star next to the following. A carcinogen is a substance that causes or is believed to cause cancer. All right, please make sure that you highlight that. 
A mutagen, on the other hand, is a substance that may cause cancer, but not always. Mutagens cause an increase in cellular mutation changes, some of which are harmful, others have little or no effect on the body's function. Combustible. Material is capable of igniting and burning. Compared to this flammable, material is even easier to ignite. Combustible liquid has a flash point between 100 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit, while flammable liquid has a flash point below 100 degrees. So the term inflammable is an older term meaning flammable. Non-flammable signifies something that is not flammable. All right, I know that was a lot of information. Please do not ignore this chapter. It is very important. You will get asked a little bit about chemistry and chemical safety in your state board exam. Like always, please do not ignore the glossary. It starts on page 177. It has a lot of terminology and it goes through page 181. If you made it to the end of this chapter along with me, you are the real MVP and good for you. I hope you found this helpful. And as always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you guys on the next one.